Okay, in order to hack mobile platforms, we have to first make sure that the wireless email environment is ready. So that's what we're going to do in this first activity. Um, you need to make sure that Kali and Server 2016 VMs are running. Make sure that you have a wireless access point that's running and that your host computer can connect to it. So I'm using a laptop. Um, either you're using a laptop or you're using a desktop with a... Um, well, you could plug a cable actually into it, but you still need the uh, wireless access point running. Um, and uh, you have an Android phone, an older one, preferably version 4.4 KitKat, or up to 601 Marshmallow, because I've tested these on the older phones. They might run on the newer phones if you have endpoint protection turned off. Now, I have to tell you right now that you cannot use a webmail, gmail, yahoo mail, hotmail type email account because they will filter out your malicious attachments. So we have to use our own email server. So we have some objectives. First, we need to verify that Kali and Server 2016 can connect to and obtain a lease from the wireless access point. That's super important. Then we're going to reconfigure the email server and the email clients to use the new IP addresses. We'll verify that the phone can connect to the email server through the access point and that you can send email with attachments back and forth between Kali and the Android phone. So let's start with first of all making sure that Kali and Server 2016 can get a lease from the wireless access point. Now the thing to remember is that your wireless access point is um, on the outside and Kali and Server 2016 are on the inside. They are hiding behind your VMware um, uh, player. To them, they, it will seem like connectivity is wired, but it will then get translated from through VMware to wireless. But Kali and Server 2016 will not know that it has gone from wired to wireless. However, the IP addresses will change. So let's start with the host. Here's my host. I'm on my laptop. And when I come down here to wireless and I, I click these, I'm already connected to a wireless router. So you need to make sure you're connected to a wireless router. You know you're connected because you're on the internet. If you are using a separate thing like what we used when we were um, hacking uh, Wi-Fi, that's fine. Um, you don't actually technically need internet access for any of these module 16 activities but you got to make sure Kali already has the Thunderbird client and um, so just make sure of that. So to find out the IP address uh, this becomes super important. On my host on my host I am opening a command prompt and I am typing ipconfig this is on my host and I am verifying on my wireless LAN adapter Wi-Fi right here I am verifying the IPv4 address. I need to make sure what subnet it is because I need to make sure that Server 2016 and Kali agree with this. So mine is 10.0.0.207 with a 24-bit mask, which means every player in these activities now, in the Module 16 activities, must be using a 10.0.0 address. Now, to guarantee that they do that, what we'll do is we'll start with Server 2016. I'm on Server 2016. What you do is you go to VMware Player, and you come up here and you click VMware Player, and you go to Manage, and you go to VMware or Virtual Machine Settings. Now what you want to do is make sure that your network adapter is now set to bridged. It was on NAT, set it to bridged, we will put it back later. Make sure it's set to bridged, click OK. Do the same thing for Kali. Make sure that Kali, well we don't have to log in yet, that the Kali player in a file in a Manage Virtual Machine Settings is also set on the network adapter to bridged. Click OK. Now neither Kali nor Server 2016 need to directly connect to the Wi-Fi. You can do it if you want, but it's, it's unnecessary extra work. You just need to make sure they're bridged so that they will not pick up their lease from VMware. Instead, they will pick up their lease straight from your Wi-Fi router. That's the important part. And the reason why we need that is because when you send the malicious payload 
to the Android, the Android has got to be able to connect right back to Kali directly. And it cannot do that if Kali is hiding behind a NAT interface. So now let's make sure that these guys picked up a lease. The easiest thing to do is just make sure that they've got a lease, make sure that they are DHCP clients. Kali always was, so I'm logging into Kali. And Kali was always a DHCP client. We did not try to hard code its address. So just simply type if config, press enter, and make sure in your ethernet, because from Kali's perspective, it's just ethernet, it's not Wi-Fi. Make sure that the address belongs to the same subnet as your host. In my case, it's cool. 10.0.0.107, 24-bit mask. Kali understands and it picked up a lease. If for some reason Kali does not want to give up the lease, there's no uh, if config release renew. I mean, you can if down and if up, but Kali doesn't accept those commands. The easiest thing to do with Kali, if it's still clinging to its old address, is to simply come up to the upper right corner, click this down arrow, come to wired connection, click that and turn off. What you're doing is you're bouncing the interface. You're going to disable it and then re-enable it. So you turn off and then just a few seconds later you turn it back on and then you come back and you do an if config again. And just if and if it still doesn't work then reboot Kali. But that's like your last resort. So make sure that Kali has an address that works with the host. Okay, now go to server 2016. Server 2016 was hard coded. So we have to change that. So in server 2016, what we're going to do is we're going to come down here to the little network and sharing center. We're going to right click this little network icon, open network and sharing center. So you see the little network icon here, right click it and open network and sharing center. Oh, come on, open up. My machine's a little bit on the slow side because I'm running everything off of an external uh, hard drive. So open Network and Sharing Center. Then come to Change Adapter Settings. Click that. And then when you see Ethernet 0, double click it. Come to the properties, click that. Come to TCP IP version 4, double click that. And make sure that it is no longer set with a hard coded address. Make sure that it is set to obtain an IP address automatically. And whether or not you obtain DNS automatically doesn't frankly matter. You can pick both of these. So make sure you set it to obtain an IP address automatically. Click OK. Click OK. Close. And you might have to bounce the interface. You might have to come over here. If it does not pick up a lease, you might have to right click, disable. It will turn gray. then right click and enable. So we've bounced the interface this way. And then you come down to a command prompt in server 2016. If you don't have a command prompt handy, then click start and um, type either find command prompt or type CMD. Open a command prompt and type IP config. And just make sure that it too has the appropriate address, 10.0.0.77 in my case. Yours will be something totally different. Yours will probably be 192.168.1. something. Now, here's the kicker. Server 2016 is your email server. We need to configure the email server and the clients to now use the same address. We'll put it back later, but for now we need that because we need to have them all connect to each other wirelessly. So we need to keep in mind whatever your server 2016 address is, mine is 10.0.0.77. I'm going to remember that. Okay, so with that in mind, I'm going to open Mail Enable. If you don't have Mail Enable just on the taskbar here, then what you do is you click Start, and you go to the M's, and you find Mail Enable, you expand, and you find Mail Enable, and you start it. I've already got it going. In fact, I happen to have two of them, so I'm going to close one of them. 
when the mail enable console opens and it'll probably look something like this you need to come to servers expand servers expand local host expand services and connections we have to configure SMTP and IMAP because that's what we're using expand well actually right click SMTP go to properties make sure that right here in on the general tab DNS addresses that you have in there the new address for server 2016 mine is 100077 yours will be different so make sure it's the new server 2016 address it's still example.com of course but this new address here that's important come to the inbound tab the inbound tab click that and make sure that it is set to always bind the service to all available addresses make sure you see the new address in here come to the outbound tab and make sure um, well I think outbound is okay outbound doesn't care click OK now you might get a pop-up saying that you need to restart SMTP that's easy right click SMTP and stop you see the little hourglass then right click and start so now it is using the new addresses okay and if you want to you can right click SMTP and go to properties and just verify that your settings have taken effect all right go to IMAP right click IMAP well click it first to select it then right click and go to properties and just make sure on the general tab that it says always bind service to all available IPs and that you see the new address in there make sure you do that click OK and if you don't see it then what you do is um, make sure that uh, again you've got the IP in um, in server 2016 and if you absolutely need to what you do is you can uh, restart server 2016 but that's like a last resort click OK so we've set up the server now we need to set up the mail or the email clients so on server 2016 go to Mozilla Thunderbird and open up Mozilla Thunderbird I've already got it so I'm going to open it up right here you have your two users mine are Chris and Moo go to the first one and select it don't go into the inbox just click it up here then go to view settings for this account click that and then go to the server settings click that and make sure that the server name is your new server 2016 address it will need to be changed so make sure it's this the new address and then and if necessary click OK so I'll click OK unfortunately it closes it come over to Moo and do the same thing go to Moo view settings for this account make sure for Moo the server settings are the new address and look at this I need to change Moo Moo has to be 10.0.0.77 and click OK now you still have to set the SMTP so in this case you can select either Moo or Chris it doesn't matter pick one of them view settings for this account and down at the bottom the outgoing server SMTP covers both of them click that and you can see that Chris has already been changed but Moo was not I'm going to select Moo and I'm going to edit Moo he needs to be 10.0.0.77 10.0.0.77 he needs to be click OK so I've got that set click OK all right now that I have that let me make sure that Chris and Moo can send and receive email to each other so I'm going to click Chris and I'm going to just get messages and make sure that there are no errors that pop up and so I have a little message about calendaring I don't really care keep whatever I don't care you will probably get prompted for a password that's okay it's one password it's the number one with a password capital P and then password the rest of the word a s s w o r d and I can use password manager to remember click OK and I can see that Moo has some or Chris has something alrighty let's make sure that Chris can send an email let's write an email and to let's just make sure it's to both Chris and Moo so both of your users to both of your users and then just something new IP 
blah, 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 something, send. And we're being prompted for the password again. That's okay. Number one, capital P, A, S, S, W, O, R, D. So only the P is capitalized. Use password manager, click OK. Alrighty. So Chris sent, and also she received her email. Uh, now let's go to Moo. Let's click Moo. Let's see if we can get messages for Moo. And we got to put in Moo's password here. It's one password with a capital P. And let's go to Moo's inbox. And sure enough, there it is. And we're going to reply. Yep. Send. And for Moo's SMTP password, one capital P A S S W O R D. Click OK. And close Moo's message. And, um, oops, I didn't mean to close all of Thunderbird. Let me open Thunderbird again. And let me just go back to getting messages. Go back to the inbox here. So I can see that Moo and Chris, my two users, are communicating. We need to do the same thing with Kali. Let's move over to Kali now. So I am switching over to the Kali VM. You need to make sure, of course, that Kali has Thunderbird, which is something that was set up already. So logging on to Kali. And I'm going to launch Thunderbird. If you don't have Thunderbird already, I'm closing it, just to remind us. So here we are at the Kali desktop. You can go to Applications, and then go to um, Usual Applications. Click that. Go down to Internet, and remember how I showed you you can use your scroll wheel if, if you, in some cases. Go to Internet, and from Internet go to Thunderbird. Or, if you can't reach this, then just open a terminal. Just click a terminal, wait for it to open, come on. Open a terminal and type the word Thunderbird, press Enter, and it will launch the Thunderbird client. Just don't close this terminal until you're ready to close Thunderbird. So it'll launch Thunderbird for you. And we're just going to make sure that Moo, or whoever your second user is, can send and receive email on Kali through Thunderbird. Once we've done that, we're ready to start tackling the phone. OK, so Thunderbird is open. I am on my second user account. I click the inbox. And I might have to get messages. I see just a bunch of trash emails, whatever. OK, so I'm going to have to edit Moo, because right now he's just spinning. Let me come up to Moo, click Moo, and let me view settings for this account. Let me click that. And go to Server Settings, and be sure to change it to Server 2016's new address, 10.0.0.77. And click OK. And then, again, clicking Moo, view settings for this account, come down to Outgoing Server SMTP settings. And again, it's wrong. I need to edit it. I need to change it to 10.0.0.77. And make sure you put the dots in properly. Click OK. And so now when I click OK, probably get prompted for a password. That's all right. Go to the inbox. Let me get messages. Yep, being prompted for a password. That's fine. Check the little checkbox. And it's one password with a capital P. One, P, capital P, A, S, S, W, O, R, D. And there it is right there. And I can double click it, and I can open it, and I can reply. So let's just reply. Uh-huh, uh-huh, and send. Okay, so now we know, and we're being prompted again, when you change IPs, you have to do this. One password with a capital P. Okay, so we know, let me go back to my inbox now. We know that um, our email infrastructure is working. So the next thing we're going to do is get the phone in on this via the um, uh, Wi-Fi uh, access point. All right, so I now have my phone all ready. And I'm going to make sure that my phone is connected 
to my wireless access point. So let me just go to my phone. This is an Android Marshmallow, a 6.0.1. And you know, the way you know, in case you're not sure how to tell, you click, you tap the, the little home button or whatever that little button is. You go to settings, tap the settings button and go way down to the bottom and you can check info about your phone. Go way, way, scroll way down to the bottom about the phone, about phone, click that. And it should say Android version and it's 6.0.1. You can do a Google search, but 601 is Marshmallow. You want to be somewhere from 44, starting at 44 to 601. I know for a fact, anywhere from 44 to 601 or fives or whatever, uh, it'll work. Um, the others I'm not so sure about. Okay, um, sometimes I have trouble with the, the Gmail client. A uh, default Android should have a native email client. So when I tap the home button, I have a native email client that might be uh, easier to work with than Gmail. Um, and we're not using Google Gmail on the cloud. We're just using an email client pointing to our email server. But right now let's connect to the same Wi-Fi as, um, the, uh, as my, my laptop here. So I've tapped home, I'm going to settings, I'm going up to the top to Wi-Fi. I tap Wi-Fi and I just make sure I'm connected and you put in the user or whatever the password is. So I'm connected to the very same WAP. Okay, great. Now, now that I have that, um, so I should be able to uh, get an address. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'll ping just to prove it. Uh, let me go back to the home. Let me go back to settings. If you come to your Wi-Fi and you tap your Wi-Fi connection, you'll see the IP address. Well, let's tap that one more time. 100026. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come over on um, Kali right here and I'm going to make sure that Kali can ping 100026. Oops, I better open another terminal. I don't want to mess with um, Thunderbird. Meanwhile, I'm going to keep my phone going so it doesn't go to sleep on me because that's a, that's a risk here. Let me ping 10.0.0.26. See if we could, yep, sure enough, so my phone is responding. Okay, great. So there is connectivity between Kali and my phone. All right, great. So now let me set up my email client on my phone. I'm going to use the native rather than Gmail because Gmail doesn't always work. I mean, it works sometimes, not always. So I'm tapping home. I'm going to the native email client here. I'm going to tap that and open it. So uh, we're going to set up email. And so let's just go, we have to do a manual setup. I don't know if you can see it, but mine says manual. So I'm going to tap, well, I'm going to tap email. Uh, my email address here uh, is going to be, um, this is Chris, Chris, whoops, I can type really, I can tap really, Chris at uh, example.com, example dot com okay and then i'm doing a manual setup here so i'm going to tap manual setup and it's a, an imap not a pop3 not an exchange the password is um cap or rather the number one and then uh capital p then a s s w o r d and let me uh, i tap the little i to make sure i did that right okay next and now um so the username is chris at example.com, got the password. Now the, the key is the server is, don't just have the name, you gotta put in the IP, otherwise it's gonna fail, because we don't have DNS here. So it's 10.0.0.77. And then the port is gonna be the clear text IMAP 143. Security type, make sure it's set to none. There's no SSL here. Security type, none. IMAP path prefix, don't care about that click next or type tap next. The SMTP cannot be a resolvable name. It must be the IP because we don't have DNS. 10.0.77. Make sure it's the clear text SMTP port. Security type, oops, security type none. I gotta move my little recording thing out of the way here. Security type none. And it does require login. Okay, so make sure you've got that. Tap next. And um, try to have this thing synchronized as often as you can. So I'm tapping, I'm gonna try every five minutes. That was one bummer about Google uh, Gmail. It only went every 15. And uh, I do wanna synchronize from this account. I, auto, I want to automatically download attachments. I wanna be notified when email arrives. Tap next. Create this account, it's gonna go out. 
wirelessly and try to connect. <laughs> My display on a, I'm not Moodharma. Let me just change that. So I'm Chris. Moo is my buddy on the other side. So, okay, we're set, finish. So now we need to make sure that Moo and Chris can send email. And it looks like the emails just came in right away. So that's awesome. So I'm just going to tap one of these and I'm just going to reply. Just make sure the emails are working just fine. And um, so let me just go here and let me reply. Oh, I've got some artifacts here. So let me just... Uh, says I've got a remaining download. I need to just like make sure there's no downloads here. I thought I got rid of all of that. Let me see. Let me just try to see if I can do this. Now ordinarily you can pull down here to see downloads can't see this right here. I might have something stuck in email because I thought I got rid of all that stuff. Let me go out to the settings and let me go down to the apps and make sure there's no downloads happening and see if there is a download manager here that's running. Show us downloads. Um, looks like my downloads, I've got nothing going on here. Okay. Let me see if I can come over here. And let me just try to go back to my inbox here. Do I have anything coming in? It thinks that there's a download. Let's see if we can just tap something and try to respond. Okay, here we go. It, it thought there was a download, but there, there wasn't anything. Okay, so yes, and send. Okay, so let's just make sure that, let's go. <laughs> what a cute little sound. Okay, let me go over and make sure, uh, I just saw a notice that the email came in. Great. All right, so here comes this response and there it is. All right. So Kali and my phone are working fine. They're sending email back and forth to each other. The next thing to do now is to create the malicious payload and send it to the unsuspecting phone user. That's the next thing we will do.